Hi, I'm Maitani Rutagoyena from MIT City Science, and today I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about hyper-efficient places of living. So we already have defined what is a walkable community with everything we need within a walking distance. But now we must rethink our living spaces from an environmental, economic and social perspective. Traditionally, we've just been always focusing in just the environmental, environmental performance of the buildings, but this needs to change. If we look into Kendall Square here in Cambridge, residential energy use accounts roughly 50% of greenhouse gas emissions. This is an estimate of 5.2 tons of CO2 per capita. Only 10% of these emissions are attributed to the embodied energy, and the 90% of these emissions are, be, belongs to the operational energy, like use of appliances, lighting, cooking, and heating. So it is clear to us that to reduce the, this climate change, we have to reduce also very drastically the greenhouse emissions from residential buildings. But what are the ways of reducing these emissions? Well, there are two approaches to consider. The first one, we can eliminate the use of fossil fuels and use more distributed low-carbon energy systems. And secondly, we can rethink how we use the space. What if we can build less per person? What if we can build less and design efficiently so we can cut both the embodied and the operational energy to half? Because these three factors are equally related. If we want to target the CO2 emissions, we have to rethink how we build our spaces and, we, and in consequence, we will see a reduction in the cost. So with this second approach, we will see a very positive impact in the economic performance of the buildings. We have seen this in the traditional Japanese houses, where they use sliding doors to separate large spaces. Sometimes, these spaces are used for big parties, and at others, they are divided into a more private, smaller rooms. This is achieved through a sliding door made uh, of a wooden frame and covered with a translucent, translucent uh, sheet of paper. But learning from them, we have our 21st century effortless and automated solution. Here in the City Science Group, we are working in new strategies for places where people will live and work, because we want to create more vibrant, productive, and creative spaces. We are developing a scalable, hyper-efficient, and transformable um, solutions, because we believe that urban space is too valuable to be static. In one of our projects, we demonstrate that a 300 square feet apartment can function two, three times that size. This is achieved through a transformable, through a transformable wall system that integrates furniture, storage, lighting, office, and entertainment system. Sometimes, the living room can be transformed to a bathroom or a dinner party size, and at others, the bedroom can be transformed to a gym. So the rooms are created on demand depending the, the function that you need at that, at that time. But what about the social performance? With these solutions, we are bringing more people together. They share ideas. So we are increasing the social interaction, diversity and density in urban spaces. We have seen this in Paris during the Industrial Revolution, when a massive population moved toward the cities and this additional housing led to a new building hierarchy called Hasmanian. These buildings were designed to accommodate a variety class of, of people. We, can, we could see that in the ground floor is where the commercial spaces were, were located. In the upper floor, in like the third and third floor, they, they had more space, high ceilings, so high-income high, high families were living. And in the higher floors uh, is where the smaller rooms were located, so low-income families like maids, servants, or artists were living. So as a result, we make cities a better place to live. C cities became more sustainable, productive, and, and, and better. So we are bringing together people from different backgrounds, ideas, ethnicities, ages, races, or socioeconomic levels. 
but we don't have to forget that we have to tackle the environmental, the social and the economic performance all together if we want to create more efficient, affordable and social, socially diverse spaces. So with these solutions, we can see, we can cut the CO2 emissions of housing to 8.2 tonnes of CO2 per person. And now that we have defined the places where people live and work, Naroa Coretti will present the mobility system that will connect them. Thank you very much.